So I was pretty excited when I heard that Autopilot for Everyone was finally coming out. And then I start up Assistant, expecting to see it, and all I get is this. I get this carousel spinning with all of these great promises, but I can't do anything. And that's because Autopilot wasn't enabled. In this video, we're going to enable Autopilot for Everyone. So what exactly is Autopilot for Everyone? Well, you could call it Autopilot for Everything, I guess, because whereas Autopilot for developers and testing and stuff like that in UiPath, are Autopilot functions for those specific UiPath products. Autopilot for Everyone is basically Autopilot in an assistant that can do anything for you. Now, not out of the box, of course. Out of the box, it can do a fairly limited number of things. It can Google stuff, look up things on Wikipedia, and you could use it as an interface uh, towards a, a large language model, as you know from ChatGPT or Gemini. But you can do so much more with Autopilot for everyone. And in this video, what we're going to do is just get it up and running so you can actually start to play with it. And then in other videos, we're going to see how we can enable it to use automations, to use context grounding, and other very exciting things. In order for you to enable Autopilot for everyone, you need admin rights inside of your Automation Cloud. If you don't have that, if you don't even have Automation Cloud, find another video that will teach you how to install UiPath and get access to Automation Cloud as an admin, because then you can do the following. Go to your Automation Cloud, as I have done here, then go to your admin section, and I have made it a favorite up here in the top left. I'll click Admin. Inside the Admin page, I'll click AI Trust Layer, and in here, we have five different pages, one of them being Autopilot for Everyone. If we click that, then we can select a tenant and then install Autopilot for Everyone. So we'll select a tenant, but wait, the button doesn't light up. And that's because there's a bunch of prerequisites that need to be met in order for you to be able to install it. Most of these prerequisites, I have a feeling you've already met. But let's run through them very quickly. A couple of them I'll go into a little bit more detail, but we want to get this installation done as quickly as possible. So Automation Cloud. You have Automation Cloud because you wouldn't be here otherwise. UiPath Assistant and Robot 24.10 or higher. Well, you need to be on one of the latest versions of uh, Automation Cloud and Robot and Assistant. So make sure you have that as well. Personal Workspace needs to be enabled. If I just open my orchestrator in a different tab here, we can see inside my orchestrator that I have uh, my personal workspace right here. So it is enabled. We can also see I have a demos folder and in neither of these folders, I have anything. I mean, I don't have any processes, assets, queues or anything, but uh, we'll get back to that in just a, a little bit. Go back to the tab with um, the prerequisites. We can, uh, also see that we need to have document understanding enabled. And the way you check that is you go to your admin page, select your tenant, select services, and here you'll see all of the services that you have enabled for your tenant. I have document understanding right here in the middle. If I didn't have it, there would be an option up in the upper right hand corner, I believe, to install or enable more services. And I would have to do that in order to meet that prerequisite. Let me just go back to the AI Trust layer, Autopilot for Everyone prerequisites list. We can also see that we need a valid license for Autopilot. There's a number of different ways to get a valid license. The short version is if you're a developer, you have access. If you are an Automation Express developer, you may have access, depending on how you got that Automation Express license. If you got it as part of the free UiPath plan, completely free free, you probably don't have access. If you got your Automation Express license as part of an enterprise plan where you always get these 100 Automation Express licenses, then you probably will have access. So there's a number of different ways. Also, if your organization has AI units and you have Assistant installed, then you can use Autopilot uh, for everyone because it does consume AI units once you get above a certain number of what are called actions. So make sure you have that. I do. So we're going to move on. You need um, user license management enabled. The way you check that is you go again to the admin page. You select your organization up here. Then you click settings, go to advanced, 
and down here at the bottom we can see that user licensing management is already enabled for this current account so we're good otherwise we could click a button and it would become enabled we'll go back to admin AR trust layer autopilot for everyone and now there's only one prerequisite left we need to enable the anthropic models in automation ops now the anthropic models are what drives autopilot it is um, a set of models and i'll see if i can explain this right because i'm not even sure i understand it it's a set of models made by anthropic the model set is called claude and i believe the uh, model the main model for autopilot for everyone is called sonnet and i could be wrong if i am correct me in the comments below but we need to enable those uh, models inside of automation ops the way you do that again i've made a favorite up here to automation ops we go in and we can see here that we don't have any policies automation ops is basically where you administer policies for how users can use your uipath platform including developers so uh, for example uh, you could have a policy that says that all developers must use analyze project before they can uh, deploy a project stuff like that um, and also we can create a policy for uh, all of the new ai stuff so we'll do that uh, the way we'll do it is we'll add a product policy by clicking the add product policy button and then we'll select the well it's actually selected already the ai trust layer uh, option and then we'll give the policy a name and we're just going to call it autopilot for everyone apfe and then click add once we do that we get all of these options and we have basically three uh, different tabs here with different options where you can enable different features um, and you can enable different um, models and here we see the anthropic models that are currently disabled and we need to enable those as it said in the prerequisite so i'll just click enable click save and now we have a policy that enables the anthropic models that we need in order to use autopilot for everyone now we've created the policy but we haven't deployed it yet and the way you do that is you go to deployment over here and here you can deploy that policy to either apply to users or groups or the entire tenant and just to make it easy we'll just uh, apply it to the entire tenant i'll click my default tenant here and this will show up and under the no license section up here we have the ai trust layer over here we can select which policy do we want to apply for the ai trust layer we want to apply the apfe policy that we just created that enabled those uh, models that we need so i'll click save and now we have not just created the policy we've also deployed the policy so now if we go back to admin go to ai trust layer and into autopilot for everyone if i now select a tenant we can see the little spinny thing and now i can install autopilot for everyone so i'll click the install button and just keep my mouth shut for a while fast forward the video and voila like magic autopilot solution has been installed and now we have autopilot for everyone now if i go to my assistant down here i still have the carousel nothing new there i will just i could just i guess sign out of it and uh, but i'll just quit and start it up again and now when we start it up we can see the things start happening we do get the carousel for just a second but then we can see that it's also installing downloading setting up stuff and here we go now we have autopilot for everyone and this is the interface we have all of these different uh, prompt suggestions here and then we have a text field down here at the bottom where we can add our own or write our own prompts uh, to autopilot and we're not going to get into that too much in this video because I want to go behind the scenes and then in the next videos we can check out all of the cool stuff that we can do out of the box and also the stuff that we can add with automations and context grounding and stuff like that but let's go behind the scenes and see what really did happen if we first venture into orchestrator remember just a few minutes ago we only had the my workspace and demos folder in here if i just press f5 now let's see what happens I now have a folder called autopilot inside of autopilot i have five processes if we check those out we can see that well there's just five normal automations they all uh, except one is they are cross-platform but the exciting thing is 
how autopilot use these automations not the automations themselves because they are pretty simple i mean i know how to google stuff i know how to look stuff up on wikipedia but it's how the integration between the assistant or the autopilot for everyone and these automation how that is tied together that's fairly exciting so one thing we could do is we could go into the google automation here and edit it and if we just uh, go to the next and next in the final page here we can see here that there's a description here that says perform google search it has been tagged with the autopilot tag and then there's a number of properties and again we're not going to go into details on those here but just note that these are properties that signal to autopilot that this automation can be used by autopilot so that's sort of on the orchestrator side of things if we go back into the um, admin section and back into the ai trust layer select autopilot for everyone select our tenant and we get these uh, four sections back in just a second starting prompts context grounding automation properties and advanced settings in the automation properties if i select my autopilot folder that we just saw was created inside my orchestrator and then select the uh, google automation we can see here that there is a prompt description here performs a google search and returns publicly spelled wrong available information and it is enabled for autopilot that's actually what set that flag on the automation and it is also set as what's called a pre-response action um, and I'm not going to get into that uh, now because I really don't know what it is. And then there's, I guess, what is a parameter down here that also is described in plain text as the search string to be forwarded to the Google automation. So what I like about this, and I've tried building a simple automation and getting it to be able to be activated by autopilot. And what I think is fairly exciting is that we have assistant over here and assistant is able to trigger automations over here in our orchestrator but the stuff that ties it together the stuff here in the middle is not as static and as hard coded as you might think because it's all based on prompts so you describe in plain language what the automation can do you describe over here in plain language what is the task you want to have solved and then in between you have the ai trust layer that sort of describes that this automation over here can be used by autopilot if those uh, flags are enabled and with a prompt description that sort of ties everything together so that when you write something in plain english it knows to trigger the automation over here in in orchestrator land there's a lot of stuff to talk about when it comes to autopilot for everyone i'm going to do videos on how you build automations that are enabled to be run from autopilot we're going to look at how you can do context grounding without an automation directly inside of autopilot in the next video you can see right here and if it's not there yet that's because this video is so new that that one hasn't been produced yet in the meantime you can click on the round thing down here to subscribe to my channel and if you like this video give it a thumbs up it really does make a difference hopefully i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching this one